Quilters. Today's show is all about how to cut and organize your pieces for this AccuQuilt Along. So stay tuned and see what we're doing today. I'm Pam Heller, AccuQuilts Cutting Expert. And I'm Erica Botker, AccuQuilts Creativity Expert. Welcome to part one. Da -da -da. I'm excited about this block. Go Shoe Fly Spin Throw Quilt, AQS AccuQuilts Along. Today we'll be showing you how to cut and organize your pieces for the two different blocks in this project. We're also going to talk about fabric choices yes. and go quilt. That's right. Now the pattern is a free download at AccuQuilt.com. Plus, we're going to be answering your questions live throughout the show. So send laptop. your questions and we'll do our very best to get you an answer. All right, be sure to ask your questions um, that you have in the comments section from wherever you stream That's our show. Right. And our team is gonna send them to me on That's our laptop. Right. That's right, now in case you missed it, the first show for the Quilt Along that introduced this project, the introduction, and we went over using the go mix and match five inch cube mm -hmm. with the companion corners or traditional rotary cutting. I wrote patterns for other sizes of cubes, including the uh, four, six, eight, and nine. There you go. And they're linked in the blog post from that introduction program, and which was at the end of one of your AQ lives two weeks ago. Two weeks, two weeks ago. ago today. So many times ago, it was so long ago. Um, and those rotary cutting instructions are there and yes. the new patterns are there and you can find our blog on our website. But we're gonna be making the five inch cube mm -hmm. version. It is. All right, it is really beneficial to watch that show before right. you start on the Go Shoe Fly Spin Quilt. Uh, so be sure and check it out on AccuQuilt's video gallery, Facebook or YouTube pages. That's right, okay. So here's a look at the two different blocks. Okay, Erica has made hers and we're gonna- I've got one of each. Well, I've got more than one, okay. So I, you know, I, I because I write the blog, I have to kind of sew ahead right. so that I can take pictures for you all. So this is the spin block. Right. And this is our shoe fly block. Right, and Erica's using lovely grunge. Um, yes. And it's for her new grandbaby that will be yes. born in December. So her tones are a little muted. Right. Uh, mine are very different and you'll see that. But you can see here's that shoe fly block. It's a real standard it is. pattern. It is, it right? is real standard. And this one, um, we're gonna show you how to cut all the pieces. Now, before we get started cutting, we wanna talk a little bit about these blocks That's in right. a little bit more depth. So right. like we said, five inch cube, right? Right. Now we mentioned we're using the five inch cube and companion corners. Um, but you might think that these blocks looker, look bigger than five inches and you're correct. So um, Greg, I'm gonna come back here and we'll talk about it here on this wall, okay? So here's that shoe fly block right here. Half square triangles and squares, okay? Now, typically, Erica, we have uh, the cube is based on a two by two grid. Right. Right? So these would finish to two and a half inches. Four of them make a five inch finished block. Right. But we're doing a three by three grid. So three columns and three, three rows across. So two and a half, two and a half, and two and a half equal seven and a half inches. That's right. That's so right. Just Keep that in mind that it's going to be bigger than those five inch cubes. That's right. That's right. right. So the shoe fly block is made with just two cube shapes. Mm -hmm. Shape number one, which is the large square in yep. your mix and match cube. And shape number three, that's the large half square. And like Pam said, those units are going to finish at two and a half inches, <coughs> excuse me, in your project. And that's going to make them seven and a half inches. Right. Now remember, if you're using a different size cube, your blocks will finish to different sizes. Right. 
So you can go to the introduction blog post to download directions using the four, six, eight, and nine inch cubes. Right. And we know from seeing your fabrics in the AQS Quilting Project Parade Facebook group that lots of you are using your eight inch cube to make yes. your projects. So remember, shape number one in your eight inch cube is going to finish to four inches. Right. That means that with the three by three grid, you are making 12 inch blocks. Which are bigger than the ones from the five inch. So keep exactly. that in mind. You're gonna have to adjust the fabric. Right, right, right. And those fabric requirements are in that adjusted pattern for you that you can link in the introduction blog. Perfect. The spin block, spin block is also on a three by three grid. And ours, since we're gonna still use that five inch cube, it will still finish to seven and a half inches. That's right. All right, so don't forget, like we mentioned in the beginning, ask any questions you may have in the comment section wherever you stream our show, and Pam here is gonna check and relay them to us, and we're gonna come up with answers for you. All right. Do we have any? Not yet. Okay. All right, so we're just looking so far. Um, if you have any questions, put them in the link. Right, okay. Now for this project, you're using four, it's written to use four colors. Okay, let me show them the four colors because okay. it took me a hot minute. Right. So here's the red that we're also gonna use here in the border. Right. Here's the white background. This right. one's super cute because it has pink dots. It is super cute. I love that. And this gray is also the skinny border. Mm -hmm. And the fourth color, Erica, is this dark gray. And the binding and the binding. Right. Okay, so keep that in mind. Right. So I've chosen, as Pam said, I have a, a girl. It's a girl. She's coming in December. So I chose real muted colors that are gonna go with her new room. And I am using the pink in place of the red. Right. I'm using actually the gray in place of the white. Right. The sage green is in place of the gray, I think. Yep. Yes, then I'm gonna do my outer border and binding in the pink, and then I'm gonna pull in some white for the, that middle border. Right. So I'll do the sage, the gray border, the, I think it's gray. Yeah. Gray border, a white border, and then the pink border. I love this, Again, and she's using my favorite uh, mode of grunge with yes. that. Okay, so I am using completely different uh, fabrics. This is Northcott fabric. This is from their Stonehenge collection. So look at these. So I'm using actually kind of a light gray as mm -hmm. my white, my red as my red, and a dark gray for my red uh, for my gray. So go. I'm going to have. I mean, the difference of colors is drastic between right. what we're right. choosing to do, but don't forget, um, we have a great program called Go Quilt. Yes. That will allow you to change the colorway of your blocks, and we'll and talk about that. I saw one of our quilters has put together a lovely Halloween palette with purple and orange and black and green, and it was stunning. Oh, and she knew we would love it, and she I was know. right. So I think she's I just did Halloween for too. the last one. <laughs> All okay, right. so no matter which, how you're cutting your quilt, you're going to want to download the instructions, right? Yes. You want your pattern. Even if you're rotary cutting, you still want to go ahead, download that five inch pattern so that you have all the directions. Yes. So I've gone through, you can see, I've crossed out to keep myself on track, red and written pink, crossed out the gray, wrote sage, and so on. So I've can help myself keep track. Perfect. So your red is red, so we're safe with yes. that. And the first shape that we're gonna cut is gonna be shape one. Now, we went ahead and subcut all of our fabric, right? right? If you look at the pattern instructions, they're gonna talk about subcutting. Mm -hmm. Basically what we did here, let's pull out the skinny one first because then we won't break a nail. All right, let's pull these shapes out for you. Yes. Don't forget the shapes are the same in every cube. They're just different sizes. Right. All right, so shape number one is just a square, a big square. So what we've done is we've followed the pattern instructions. If I can get it out of there. There we go. We measured from here to here, added a quarter of an inch on either side, 
and just rough cut width of fabric strips. You right. can see right there, I have my little salvage edge. So we can just fan fold back and forth across those blades. That's right. And we have, if you check your pattern, it's gonna tell you exactly what width of fabric you need. And so I went to my cutting table and subcut all of my with the fabric strips so that I would be ready to come and cut. Yep. All right, so we're gonna pull out some of these dies because we're gonna need shapes one, three, four, and five. Are we gonna need them five? Oh, absolutely, it's the workhorse, Pam. Oh, it is, I gotta pull the workhorse out and then we'll pull them out. And then six, we need shape six. I got six. Okay, here we go. All right, I'm gonna use my go big and Erica is going to use I'm gonna the use go, the go today uh, because we can. We're gonna leave these dies out right here for one second. All right, and Erica, are you gonna, do you wanna go ahead and start cutting yeah. while I look and read some um, questions? I will, I will. Okay. All right. Uh, we, do, do we not have questions yet? I don't think we do. Wait, I'm, are you looking in the right place? I'm looking in the right place. Oh, okay. There we go. Good, okay. I feel like sometimes our quilters are super smart and they know what we're doing. Okay, so I need a mat, please. Oh, nothing happens, nothing without, happens a mat. without a mat. There you go. And what shape are you gonna cut, Erica? I'm gonna cut shape number one because I had already cut some and I made a note that I only needed to cut four more. Oh, so excellent. this is how I'm gonna get started. It's gonna be like my, my getting started. I'll move my water. All right, and I'm so gonna Greg start can get a shot. shape three. And I did this a little bit different than Erica. Um, we'll talk about um, organizing your pieces, but um, shape three needs to be cut out of all three colors. And so I just subcut my pieces and then put them in a zippy bag that says three. Well, okay. there you go. I know. All right, so while I'm cutting these, let's remember quilters to talk about lengthwise grain while Erica's cutting hers. That's right. What you want is that lengthwise grain parallel to these lengthwise blades. So for me, thank you, Greg. For me, what I'm gonna do is I've rough cut, this is my salvage edge. There's that nice tight lengthwise grain, okay? And now when we talk about fan folding, it means we're just coming back and forth across this die, okay? Are you good? Yes, I'm good. So I only needed four of these. I've got them cut. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and just pin this back on. It's a cute pin, I don't wanna lose it. <laughs> it's, some things are Did more important than you see that? It's a bee. Oh, it's very cute. It is a very cute see? pin. So that it's there, I'm gonna give you this one because I don't think I have to cut. Well, maybe I do. I and don't then know. I've got this extra. I'm gonna put this aside because then I can use it to cut something else. There you go. So quilters, we're just kind of keeping um, track of our pieces and the shapes that we need to cut. And Erica, you and I talk about this all the time, how we really truly want to cut all of our pieces first. Yes. Because then you can lay out your blocks. Now look at this. I want to show you these half square triangles that we've cut. Look, we've cut them perfectly. We've cut off the dog ears. So from here to here is a perfect quarter inch seam. I mean, I feel like cutting off the dog ears is half the battle. It really is, it really is. Because that, not only are you cutting it perfectly accurately and you're cutting it quickly, but you're saving yourself even extra time along the road. Right Go back, Kenyon. Go back up there. Okay, yeah, we'll get there. All right, so I'm gonna cut some red. Remember, you can always cut six layers of cotton. Oh, but Erica, we can cut so many other fabrics besides cotton. We can. Flannel, felt, denim, wool, cork, minky. Just be sure you don't overload your layers. Now I need more of shape one in my gray. Okay. So I cut six layers. Now I'm just gonna shift this over, lay it out again, fan fold again. Yep. And every now and then, Erica, I have one little thread here. I'm just gonna and tell you. And you're just gonna trim it off. Yep. All right, so I'm gonna cut my um, light gray or my white out of three. And then we're gonna talk about the companion set that you'll need because not only do you need the five inch cube, 
but you need the companion set corners. That's right. Okay, I'm gonna take this set this what aside. What are we doing over here? We're doing good. I just cut 12 of my squares, just lickety split. Yes. I'm gonna set these aside with my other shape number ones. Yep. And then we're gonna talk a little bit about corners. the corners. Yep, so give me one second here. Okay. So Listen, I'm gonna cut all my shape three so that I know that that's what I've cut. And then I'm gonna put the fabric that I have here back into that Ziploc bag because I've already subcut it. Then I don't have to measure it twice. Oh, so maybe this is where I should show. Well, we're gonna talk about organizing yeah, later. Yeah, we will. Never mind. Okay, hold on. All right. <laughs> I'm having such a good time here. I know, here. I know. We fabric. love getting, getting our fabric all cut. So we're cutting next. We wanna talk about those corner units. Yep, let me and pull them out. we get the... Yep, why don't you get your block out block and we'll over them. here. Okay. All right, so AccuQuilt has two companions, corners and angles that we talk about, okay? All right, so Erica, this shape here is called, uh, they call it the square in the corner, right? But it's bow tie. Not. Bow ties. Bow ties. Bow tie so shapes. some people will call it a snowball or right. a square with a snowballed corner. Right. And we're gonna get those dies out. So this can be a little confusing. And the first thing we wanna talk about is why they're numbered the way they're numbered. They are. All right, so let's pull these two out. So this is the companion set corners. Remember, the companion sets have to match the size of the cube. Right. It's not like your friends in real life that are different sizes, they all have to match. So the companion set angles has, two, uh, corners. the first, or corners, has chisel and signature block and these two shapes. These two shapes make bow ties or snowballs depending on right. where you live or how you want to put them together. Right, exactly. All right, so let's look at them real quick. All right, so this is gonna cut this shape here that mm -hmm. Erica has here in the pretty green and then this tiny little half square triangle is this shape here. Now, these are numbered 11.1 and 12.1. That's right. And the reason they're numbered like that is because AccuQuilt, when we first released the cubes, we released what we called the Companion Set Classics. And it had chisels, signature block, and the two shapes that you would need to make Drunkard's Path. Well, we found that our quilters weren't gonna really use that as much as we thought. And, and some of them were scared by curves. Yes, curves get a little scary. So we created the companion set corners, right. which has shape number nine, which is chisel, shape number 10. And so that you wouldn't get confused, we now have 11.1 and 12.1. That's right. Oh, there is questions. There are questions. Okay, let's. Okay. This is a great place to stop and answer. Questions. Oh, there are so many. Okay. okay. <laughs> Good. I, well, there wasn't there for a minute. Okay. Um, okay. So Jenny wants to know how do you change which cube you want on the pattern? So I would say whatever cube size you have, that's the pattern size you should choose. Right. Make so, sure you have the companion corners. So we've made it easy for you with this mm -hmm. one because we've redone, we've, we've done a version of the pattern for the four, the six, the eight, and the nine, right. along with the 12. The reason the, the we, five, the I five. mean. The reason we didn't do the 10 and the five is your, your the 10 and the 12 is your blocks would be huge. Yes. Like yes. 18 inches. Right. Okay. 15 and 18. Yeah. So we decided not to do those. Now, if it's a not, if it's a different pattern that only exists maybe for the eight inch cube and you want to make it in a different size, you just have to keep in mind that the shapes are the same, but the fabric requirements are going to be different. They are. So you're going to need more fabric or less fabric. Yes. Okay. And Sandra says, can you show the shapes on the dies that you're using? So let's just go over them real quick. Okay. Okay. Here is shape number one. Yes. Which is the square. Shape number three, which are big half square triangles. So we're going to use that's right here. Yeah. 
on the corner oh, of here, this here. one. Should we do it that way? Let's do that. Do you have a shoe fly block? I do. Okay. We'll start at the beginning. That will help you. Yes. So shape number one, we're gonna show the die, that's the square. Right there. And that we're gonna be using in our shoe fly block. Yes. It's those four sides and the center block. Shape number three are in the shoe fly block, they're the corners, and you're gonna use it in the spin block right here. On those outer corners. On the outside. Okay. Shape number four, you're gonna use in the spin block. No, you're not. Shape number four. Oh, I thought you pointed to shoe fly and it confused me. That's okay. Spin, this Shape, one's spin. Spin. Shape number four is right here, which are part of flying geese. Every cube has flying geese. You need shapes four and five. five. So let's get shape number five, which are these half square triangles. So you're gonna use your half square triangles here on this um, unit. Right. And then here on the outside of those flying geese. We're gonna talk about how to sew these units next. We're yes. gonna sew the spin block next week, so don't anybody panic. We're really focusing on cutting today. Yeah. I know some of you just work ahead. Just work ahead, it's okay. Okay, shape number six is this shape. It is the square on point. It is the center um, unit for the spin block. There's that square on point, and then shape number five is what you're gonna need around it. So quilters ask all the time, what makes it a square on point? And the answer is math, because we've done the math for you so that it is the exact size you need that will fit, line up with shape number five on all four sides to make that square and a square or square on point unit. Right. And then the last two we just showed you, these are um, bow tie, mm -hmm. and they're gonna go right here. Right there. So okay. to make a complete bow tie, you would have four of these yes. little units. Yes. But we only need one for this. Yes. So that, don't get confused by that because that is a little bit confusing on how we measure them. And Gwen from Canada says, uh, so for the shoe fly block, it only takes shape one and three, correct? All right, now Patty wants to know if she doesn't have the companion sets, um, do the die cutting instructions explain how to cut out those? So, the, so if you're rotary cutting, you'll need to refer back to the blog, either our blog or the AQS introduction blog for those rotary cutting directions that AQS has written for you. So you'll need two things if you're rotary cutting. You're gonna need that blog post. You're also still going to need the five inch directions because you'll need those for how to put it together. Great explanation. All right. Uh, where can we find the color in the page, uh, the coloring page? So, so there isn't a coloring page for these blocks because they are not block on boards. The coloring page exists for block on board blocks. Right. So, but what you can do is go to Go Quilt, Go Quilt, which is our free design tool, and you can imagine this with all kinds of colors. Right. So Go Quilt has thousands of patterns, including this one. So you would search by the pattern, and then it allows you to change the colorway either using fabric from your stash, you can take pictures and upload it, mm -hmm. or you could just choose from the color wheel that we provide you. And then you can see how different it looks, and then you can save your pattern and print it out, and yes. then you'll know how everything works. So it's called Go Quilt. Uh, you just need to log into your AccuQuilt account, and it's in the top right-hand corner. Okay, all right, so hang on. We're doing so good here. Okay, go back and check. I'm just cutting some of these 11.1s. Yes, thank you for asking. Oh, okay, Sheila in Connecticut says. Hi, Sheila. Hi, Sheila. I have a bunch of fabric that doesn't hang straight when I match the salvage edges. It must be printed off green. Oh. How do I cut it? Okay. I'm going to tell you I don't know. Well, it depends. I mean, it depends on the pattern. Is it stripes? Is it? You're going to have to unfold it all the way mm -hmm. and, and iron it, out. it and iron it up, and then you're going to have to square it up with like a ruler and your rotary cutter. 
according to the print on it. And that happens a lot when you're working with something that has stripes or maybe right. a plaid, um, that you have to do that. So you, you have to take the time and the effort, it all out. which is hard, Yeah, but you have to do it that and way. And I would do it in sections. You know, I mean, I, I would do like one yard sections. Now, if you want to go totally old school, I was taught that it'll only, if you, to tear it, it'll only tear along the straight of grain. So you could make a clip and tear it. But I, I like using my rotary cutter, especially if I'm working with stripes or plaids mm -hmm. or something like that. And I think I showed that in the last quilt along when we were cutting it out. I think you did. Because I used plaid, because I love okay. plaid. Um, Julie says, can you use the 10 inch cube and the 12 inch cube? The answer is yes. We did not write the pattern instructions for him. And think about how big it is. Right. So remember, with the t because this is a three by three grid, that means your 10 inch cube is going to make 15 inch blocks and your 12 inch cube is going to make 18 inch blocks. So if you do the math and do the pattern as it lies, that's going to be a really big quilt. Now, if you want to break it down and do fewer blocks, and I'm going to walk back here. Keep in mind, and I'll go to your Erica spot. Erica doesn't often walk to the back. Keep in mind that if you cut down, say if you cut these two off and just do three, that's going to cut down your overall pattern look. Yes. So it will kind of dramatically change the look of your quilt. It'll still be beautiful. It still will be. Okay, don't forget if you have questions. Um, oh, yes, Pat wants to know. Okay, and we do. Uh, we do have questions that, look, we will answer them. <laughs> okay, so Pat wants to know, can you talk about the Trade Up program? We can. We can. <laughs> and we will. Some of our retailers um, are participating in what we call a Trade Up program. Yes. So if you have a Go Me and you want to trade it up to a Go or a Go Big. Right. Um, there, you would bring in your cutter, not, you don't have to worry about your dies Just or anything. Just your cutter, right. Just your cutter. And then there's a, a fee, you get credit for that go me. And then depending on you want the go or the go big, then there would be a price for that. So you're getting basically a reduced price. Right. Now, if you don't have an AccuQuote retailer close to you, you can check out our website for the details on how you can do that through a website. Right. But um, if you have a retailer closer to you, I would definitely work Give with my local retailer. Give them a call and retailer. say, hey, do you do trade ups? So then if you have a go, which is the cutter Erica's using right. today, and you're thinking, dang, I really want to trade up to that go big, you can also do that. Again, you would bring your go in, and um, then there would be a, a price that you would earn, a credit <laughs> that you would earn for your go, and then you would purchase, you would get a go big. Oh, these are so small. I'm flying them all over the I place. I know, they're everywhere. They're but that's a great question. Yes. So check your local retailer. If not, check out the AccuQuilt website. And thank you for pointing out that they don't. They only have to take in their cutter to only trade up. So if you bought a ready, set, go, you don't have to trade in your 8-inch nope. cube and your 2.5-inch strip die it's in that. Forever. You just take your go cutter and trade it up. with, And that gives you a really, really good price on a go big. Go big. Yep, and um, like if you're trading in your Go Me, you can keep those two dies that came with it that right. make hundreds of patterns. Right. Those half score triangles, quarter score triangles. Right. Okay. Yes. Great question. Yep. So you can check out the AccuQuote website, and you can check out your local retailer. All right. We are all caught up on questions. We are all caught up on questions. Okay. Then I am Erica's going to. Just cutting. So see I'm how just she made away. these cute little corners here, these little bow tie corners. So I'm going to cut another set of them. And then I'm going to show you how I'm organizing my pieces. And we can talk because a little bit about Because truly there that. is some organization that is happening. There is, here. there is. But it's just, you know what, all, Dealer's everything that you choice. do ahead of time to organize is, is going to be nothing but helpful for you. Yeah. So let me grab my yard. Okay. So look at how, way. this is how that block looks if you were just making snowballs. Right. 
So I've got my plastic case that I got for our log cabin quilt along, and I just keep repurposing it for our quilt alongs. I think it's hilarious that she does that. That's well, fabulous. Okay, so it came with these little... I love this. So that you can change how big your yes. spots are. Yes. And I've used sticky notes and painter's tape to write the number of the shape on there. Yes. And then I just am going to take, here's my 12.1s, which and put them into my little slot for them. I'm gonna take my 11.1s, put those into their little spot. They're kind of overflowing. That's so okay. I had ones, here they are. I had ones. I had ones, my ones are gonna go in there as well. Oh, I've got that pin in there. That cute pin. That cute pin, that cute B pin. There you go. Okay. And this is exactly what you want to do, quilters. You want to right. read the pattern instructions. You want to cut your shape, pull out all your dies, cut your shapes, and then once they're there, keep them organized. Because what's going to happen is then otherwise you're going to have a huge mess. Well, and when we start sewing next week, it's going to be really helpful to have these ready because, spoiler alert, this is a huge chain piecing project. Big time. Big time. <laughs> All right, and then I, you know how I love to organize. She does love a good Ziploc um, bag. I do love a good Ziploc bag. So I just wrote with a permanent Sharpie um, what shape it is. And then, like I said, I kept these, um, the ones that I've already mm -hmm. pre-cut in there. And to me, it doesn't matter what color of shape one they are. Right. It's just going to all be the shape ones and fours and six and so forth. And so for me, this is really a good way for me because, for example, when I go to make my shoe fly block, I'm going to pull out our, yeah, I'm going to make, I only need shapes one and three. Right. So I'm just going to pull those out and go from there. That's right. So you can use whatever organizing method works for you. Maybe it's uh, several baskets or um, silverware organizers oh, or yeah. pinning them on a foam board. There's no rule as long as it makes sense to you, it fits in your quilting space, yeah. and it's going to be usable for you. And sometimes I will change my organizing techniques Well, yeah, along depending the way. on the projects. Yeah. Yeah. All right. You also want to check out the AccuQuilt blog because the lovely Erica will post each Wednesday during the quilt along going over details from the day's events. That's right. So be sure to sign up. You'll be notified whenever a blog post goes live. And today, right? After right. the show? It's already up. And AQS will also be updating their original blog post. So you can check that out as well. And I feel like we should check for some questions. I am just now looking. Um, will we? Will you be at PIQF in Santa Clara in October or Road to California in Ontario in January. Um, the lovely oh. Eric and I will not be there, but I think we will have we may retail, have retailers, retailers there that will have product. That will have product. Yes. Which will be fun. Yes. Okay. October, our dance card's really full in October. Yes. So keep tuned. And part five, our fifth quilt along of the year is going to be in October as well. I know. I'm excited. I can't believe um, that, th that this is the fourth one. Right. I mean, we have done such good work. Right. <laughs> such good work making quilts this year. I've only gotten I mean, one of mine quilted so far. How I have about two you? Of mine, two of mine quilted. Oh, she's way ahead of me. No, I know. We talked about it, but I have no binding on them. Um, <laughs> but I think that, you know, See, this is, have, mine is quilted and bound. There you go. So. This is such a great way to get together as a group and to get everybody is so right some of you maybe only made one quilt last right. year and now if you followed along to each one of these you will have made five by Christmas right and the other nice thing is you can always go back and make these later these videos live on our website on our Facebook page yep. and if you haven't yet be sure you join the AQS Quilting Project Parade Facebook group because that's really become such a cool community of quilters yes working on our projects and sharing because some of you some of you overachievers have already finished your quilt tops yeah. i can't believe it neither erica nor i we have only We're made like, vlogs what? we have not what? <laughs> yeah we've we've seen yours but it's okay and they're gorgeous so they're if you want beautiful. a little inspiration if you're feeling the the doldrums or maybe you don't even can't even think of what colors you want to yeah. make right go there and look you can check on any social media. 
be sure when you post, you use the hashtag AQSOs because then you can go and when quilters search that yeah. hashtag, they, they can, can find it. all your pictures. I know, it's really fun. Um, I met a couple of quilters a couple of weeks ago um, when I was in Seattle and um, they had the, the dye for the Morning Star dye. Yes. They had the Morning Star dye and they'd, they'd watch the first part and then they, then they, were, then they didn't get any farther. Oh, and oh I said, dear. okay, listen, just do two colors, right? Because yeah. that Morning Star quilt yeah. is great. So quilters, just go back and start. They were some, we've done some really fun projects. You know what? And this one could be scrappy as well. You know, you could make oh, this scrappy. Oh, I didn't think about it making it scrappy. I hadn't scrappy. either, but you could. <laughs> you could totally make it scrappy. You could totally make it scrappy. The other thing to take note of is that we've counted the number of shapes that are on our die. So some of these dies, remember, have more than one square, like the quarter square triangle here has four shapes on it. So when yeah. you do your six layers, That's you're actually getting 24. 24. We can do that math on a Wednesday. Okay, before we read our final questions and, and answer any things that you have, um, I think we should uh, give away, we have a winner for oh. today's giveaway. Ooh, let's do that. The lucky winner of $100 in AccuQuilt reward points today is, drum roll please. It's Marie L. from Excelsior, Minnesota. Congratulations. Uh, do you see that die there in the back on the top shelf? That's our Go Sloth die. It is the July, our August die to try. That's right. If you're looking to get it, uh, check out the AccuQuilt website. It's super cute. We just launched it yesterday. Just yesterday. And remember, we, it's a die to try. So that means it's only available for the month of August or while supplies last. And it's only available from us or your local AccuQuilt retailer. Yep. And again, we have wonderful AccuQuilt retailers. You know, if you don't know if you have somebody locally, you can go on to AccuQuilt.com and in the top right hand corner, right next, right by where it says Go Quilt, which you also want to check out, you can check out our store locator. Yep. Put in your zip code, you can change the radius to up to 200 miles and check and see if you have a local retailer. I love it. And don't forget, we have plenty of specials offers available for you on our website. That's right. To get your order in, open a new tab in your browser, type in accuquilt.com slash party. You'll see our current deals and you can place an order. All right. All right, let's look for those last questions, Pam, because uh, I bet yes. we've got some. Okay, so somebody, oh, Kathy asked, is there a chart that sa states the sizes each cube makes? By golly, well, well, each cube is going to tell you the finished size block right. so of if, a two by two grid. For a two by two grid. So if it's a eight inch cube, you're going to be making eight inch blocks. But there is a great reference tool on our website. So when you're, if you're on AccuQuilt.com, go up to the top and there's one of the headings is called Learn. You want to go into that and you're going to find links to several different great resources that will show you all of the different um, sizes, the sizes of, of each piece. Oh, yes. And all of those things. Yes. Oh. Yes, <coughs> I will in just one second. So, yes. And then you can, it, it's called the, and there's like a there's, fabric requirement right, chart. Right, there's a fabric reference yep. chart, yep. and that tells you how many you can get out of yes. a strip of fabric. Grab it. You can also go in and search under the, um, download the free 216 cube block brochure. That brochure is also going to tell you the sizes of each one. But again, if you're using the five inch cube, you're going to make five inch blocks. Right. Now, how you tell if it's going to be bigger is you check the size of those pieces. So you're going to have to do a little math quilters. There but you if go. you look at the five inch and see that those squares, shape number one, go with shape number one, if it finishes at two and a half inches, if you're going to do a, a three by three or a nine patch, then like we are, that tells you then two and a half by three, you're going to have a seven and a half inch finished block. Same thing for any other. Go with your finished size of shape number one and take that times the number of your grid, that's gonna show you the size of that block. Hopefully that helps yes. answer your question. Um, somebody wants to know, Erica, where did you find your case that's perfect? Oh, uh, I don't even remember. Check like a craft store. Craft store. Yeah. 
Okay, and then Annette wants to know on the original pattern, which is the dark gray and which is the medium gray. So right here, the medium gray is this that's sewn to the background squares. The dark is that outer border and the binding. Okay, so this is the medium gray white. That's a great question. That is a great question. All right. Um, I'm gonna cut some more boxes. Julie wants to know, do you double the five inch cube to make a 10 inch block? Yes. Uh, you can make so, 10 inch blocks with your five inch cube. So right. you would have to do a four by four grid or a right. 16 patch with your five inch cube to make a 10 inch block. Right. And can I show the owl behind me? Yes. Oh, yes. Is this what I'm looking at, Brock, I assume? A little stuffy owl. Look at these. You know, we have an owl die. We have an owl die oh, and an owl accessories die. I just dropped die. his wing. Oh, no. I'm sorry. Oh, no, he's, he's wounded. He's wounded. We'll have to fix him. Hey, um, so this is our cute little owl die. Uh, we have an owl die that um, you can make 16 different animals with. It's so fun. It's super cute. It's called Talk to the Animals. Uh, we cut this one out of felt. It has a little bottom and we stuffed him. Yes. And hand stitched him together and then Whoop. used hot glue which is why his wing is missing but we'll get him a new one but you know yes on yesterday's launch show we showed how you can make different animals out of our sloth too we did and you could i'm sure make a little stuffed sloth if you put your head to it now i will tell you now that i picked this up it does say it's by art bin if that helps you oh there we on go my on my little box it says okay. art bin on it um, oh, just curious, do you know how many pieces in this quilt? How many pieces in the quilt? No, but I counted how many pieces in the spin block, and I don't know if I should tell you because I don't want anybody to get scared. Hundreds. It's actually, I think, 49. I know, but... Um, and there are 18 of them. So there are 18 spin blocks and 17 shoe-fi blocks. Now the shoe fi box have fewer pieces. So if somebody out there wants to do the math, 18 times 49, and then how many pieces do we have in a shoe fi box? Two, four, six, eight, 10, 14. Times 17, and that's how many of those pieces. And then add the Kenyon's them doing it. Kenyon, what is it? Oh, he wasn't doing it. He wasn't doing that. Wait, he had a pen in his hand. We just assumed he was doing math. Oh, <laughs> there we go. Um, this one is specifically for the lovely Erica. Uh, this is Erin, her daughter. Oh. <laughs> um, she in the comments section said she can't wait for Grammy's finished project uh, since it's coming to her house. That's right. I'm excited about that. For our baby okay. girl. Um, oh, what does it mean, make it scrappy? Oh. So let me talk about this. Yes. Okay. So with this block right here, uh, we'll just talk about the shoe fly block, okay? So we just have the two colors, right? The red right. and the white. But I would, if I were doing it scrappy, I would make the background color the same. And then this could be blue and green and yellow and orange and purple. Or it could just be all scrappy. Or it could be f all different blue fabrics all different orange fabrics. Or you could do, you know, and then have shoe fly blocks that are, you know, one has all different orange fabrics, one has all different green fabrics. Yeah, it's a great way to like use up your scraps. I just love it. Um, and use up your stash. Okay, yes. Sonia wins, she did the math. Guess, how many oh. pieces? I don't know. Yeah, to guess, this to is- guess? Yes. I don't know, 5,000. 882. See, it's not that bad, quilters. No, that's Come not on. bad. That's not bad. And we're going to talk next week about how we're going to sew our shoe fly blocks. And then we're going to. Next week, we're going to do spin, spin blocks. blocks Because you have more of them to sew. Yes. And so we're, we're going to show first. you some tips and tricks on how to um, chain piece those. That's right. All right. I'm so glad Erin is watching. I know. I am. Hi, she Brooksy. 
Hello. All right. I, don't think, I think Brooksy's off at school today. Oh, Maybe that's that, why they're watching. That's why she's watching. All right, be sure and share all of your Quilt Along progress with us on the AQS Project Parade Facebook page. Use that hashtag AQSOS. The lovely Eric and I will be looking and at your fabric and your blocks. And for those of you who are already completed, we've already said how great it is. We can they hardly really wait. are. So be sure to check them out. Okay, it is time for us to get ready for our next show. We hope that today's show was just what you needed to inspire you to get your pieces cut and organized for the Go Shoe Fly Spin Throw Quilt. We'll see you next time. Thanks so much for watching. To learn more about your quilting craft, be sure to follow us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel for live events every Tuesday and Wednesday. You can check out the events page on the AccuQuilt website for more details on upcoming shows. And if you're looking for even more inspiration, visit our blog for exclusive tutorials filled with tips and tricks. And remember at AccuQuilt, we help you cut time so you can quilt more. Don't forget to sign up for our upcoming events and tune in to see if you've won a giveaway prize during the show. Join us every Tuesday at 12 noon Central Time for launch parties and trunk shows. Next time, we'll be letting our quilt adventure begin. And be sure to join me every Wednesday at 12 noon Central Time for AccuQuilt Live. We have tons of fun. Next time, the lovely Eric and I will be continuing our AQS AccuQuilt Along. Hope to see you there.